Consider the solid bounded by x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4 and z squared equals x squared plus y squared with z greater than or equal to 0. Use an iterated triple integral to find the volume of this solid. Before we can do anything, we need to consider what this solid looks like. The first equation is completely symmetric in x, y, and z. If we let z equal 0, we get the trace in the x, y plane, x squared plus y squared equals 4. This is a circle of radius 2. Likewise, if we let y equal 0, the trace in the x, z plane is a circle of radius 2. And if we let x equal 0, we have a circle of radius 2 in the y, z plane. In other words, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4 is a sphere of radius 2 centered at the origin. Since z is greater than or equal to 0, the first equation actually represents a hemisphere of radius 2, and we can rewrite its equation as z equals the square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared. It looks like this. Now consider the second equation, z squared equals x squared plus y squared. If we set z equal to 0, this reduces to the single point 0, 0, 0. On the other hand, if we set z equal to some positive number, for example, if we set z equal to 2, we get x squared plus y squared equals 4, which is a circle of radius 2. In other words, the trace of this solid in the plane z equals k is a circle of radius k when k is a positive number. It is also helpful to consider the trace in the xz plane or the trace in the yz plane. The trace in the xz plane is obtained by setting y equal to 0, and we get z squared equals x squared, which is two lines, z equals x and z equals negative x. Since z is greater than or equal to zero, we can write these more simply as the single equation z equals the absolute value of x. Likewise, the trace in the yz plane is z equals absolute value of y. From these considerations, we now know that the second solid is a cone with its vertex at the origin, and we can rewrite its equation as z equals square root of x squared plus y squared. You should also notice that the sides of that cone are at 45 degrees with the z-axis. The two solids can be described by the inequalities z between 0 and the square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared, and z greater than or equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. Their intersection looks like this. The problem boils down to giving a representation of our solid, which I called s, such as this where x is between two numbers, y is between two functions of x, and z is between two functions of x and y. In this case, we can write the volume integral like this. This form of the iterated integral results from choosing x and y first, and then choosing z. The possible choices of x and y can be determined by looking at the shadow of the solid in the xy plane. This is perhaps the easiest way to set up this problem. The boundary of that shadow is the xy projection of the curve that results from intersecting the two given solids. 
We can get that projection by eliminating z from the two equations, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4, and z squared equals x squared plus y squared. The resulting curve is a circle of radius square root of 2, x squared plus y squared equals 2. Thus, if we choose x and y first, then we must choose them in the circle x squared plus y squared equals 2. That, of course, has a radius of square root of 2. If we choose x first, it must be chosen between negative square root of 2 and positive square root of 2, the endpoints of the circle on the x-axis. And then we must choose y between negative square root of 2 minus x squared and positive square root of 2 minus x squared because those are the endpoints of the chord of the circle at position x. Since we chose x first, let us call our choice x0 and then slice the solid with the plane x equals x0. In that plane, we can see the resulting 2D region is bounded by a curve above and a curve below. Since x0 is a constant, the equation of the curve above is y squared plus z squared equals 4 minus x0 squared in that plane x equals x0. That is, it is part of a circle with radius square root of 4 minus x0 squared. Now consider the lower curve. Since x equals x0, its equation in the plane x equals x0 is z equals square root of x0 squared plus y squared. This happens to be part of a hyperbola since it is the intersection of a cone with a plane parallel to its axis. The endpoints of these two curves correspond to points on the shadow circle and their common z-coordinate of square root of 2 can be found by substituting their x and y-coordinates into the equation of the cone or into the equation of the hemisphere. As a consequence, if we choose a point x0, y0 inside the shadow, then the z-coordinate of a point inside the solid must be between the two bounding curves. To summarize, we can choose a point P inside the solid by following these steps. First, choose x in the shadow circle between negative square root of 2 and square root of 2. Then choose y in the shadow circle between negative square root of 2 minus x squared and square root of 2 minus x squared. And finally, choose z between the cone and the hemisphere on top. From this, we can write the volume integral in the following iterated form. To actually evaluate this iterated integral would be tedious. A much simpler approach would be to set up an integral in spherical coordinates. In spherical coordinates, any point inside has coordinates theta phi r, where theta is between 0 and 2 pi, phi is between 0 and pi over 4. The pi over 4 happens to be the angle that the cone makes with the z-axis and r is between 0 and 2. 
2, of course, is the radius of the hemisphere. Because these variables are independent of one another, we can set up the iterated integral in any order. The volume differential in the spherical coordinate system is dv equals r squared sine phi dr d phi d theta. Therefore, we can write our integral as follows. Now we can work this out. The first step in evaluating this integral is to integrate the r squared. The sine phi is constant as far as r is concerned. Let's see, the antiderivative of r squared is r cubed over 3, and we're going from 0 to 2. So that gives us the integral of 8 thirds sine phi d phi d theta. Next, we integrate the sine of phi. Let's see, the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine, and the limits are 0 to pi over 4, so it would be negative cosine of pi over 4 plus the cosine of 0, and that is 1 minus square root of 2 over 2. Finally, we integrate with respect to theta, and the integral of d theta from 0 to 2 pi is just 2 pi, so we end up with 2 pi times the 1 minus square root of 2 over 2, which I rewrote there as 2 minus square root of 2 over 2 times 8 thirds. And that simplifies to 8 pi times 2 minus square root of 2 all over 3.